Hey everyone and welcome to our deep dive exploring the world of foreclosed homes. We're going to be sifting through advice from real estate pros like Wayne Turner and Billy Cassie, examining tips for navigating the foreclosure process, and uncovering those potential pitfalls to avoid. Our mission today is to help you figure out if buying a foreclosed home is the right move for you. You know, it's interesting. Foreclosures, they often have this reputation like, are they a steal or a disaster waiting to happen? But the reality is, it's more nuanced than that. Okay, so let's break it down. What actually happens when a home goes into foreclosure? Well, foreclosure is a legal process where a lender, usually a bank, takes ownership of a property because the borrower has stopped making those mortgage payments. And this can happen for all sorts of reasons. Job loss, unexpected medical bills, divorce. Life can throw some curveballs, you know. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of divorce, Wayne Turner, a real estate expert, he pointed out that divorce is a huge EE factor. He even mentioned that with 50% of marriages ending in divorce, often one person can't handle the mortgage alone. And that pushes the property into foreclosure. It's a good reminder that behind every foreclosure, there's a story. And understanding that can help you approach these situations with a little more empathy. And if you're looking to learn more about managing your finances, maybe even generating new income, you might want to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. He offers a free affiliate guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, over 12,300 words of info packed in there. Definitely worth checking out. Now, Billy Cassie, another real estate expert, broke the whole foreclosure process down into three stages. Can you walk us through those? Absolutely. So the first stage is what we call pre-foreclosure. It's kind of like a warning phase. The homeowners missed a few payments, but the official foreclosure hasn't begun yet. And this stage can be a good time to negotiate directly with the homeowner. They're motivated to sell and avoid foreclosure impacting their credit. So it sounds like this stage really requires some legal and financial expertise. What about the next stage? Well, that brings us to the foreclosure auction, where things get a little more uh, intense. Properties are sold to the highest bidder, often at way lower prices than market value. You could say it's like a high stakes poker game. Potential for bargains, but a lot of risk too. You usually can't inspect the property beforehand. And there could be hidden issues like liens or back taxes that you would become responsible for. Plus, most auctions want payment in cash. Okay, so definitely not for the faint of heart. What happens to those properties that don't sell at the auction? Those move into the post-foreclosure stage. They become what we call real estate owned or REO by the lender. And this is the most common way people buy foreclosed homes. It's a more traditional buying process. You can get financing, have a home inspection, all that. However, there's less room for negotiation on price. The bank usually sets a firm price they're looking for. Got it. So those are the three stages. Before we dive into the details of actually finding and financing these properties, I want to mention BrianGarvin.com. Again, that's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, could be a game changer. Over 12,300 words of valuable info, and you can find the link in his YouTube bio. Absolutely packed with info. Okay, so for people out there interested in finding foreclosed homes, where do they even begin? Well, there are actually quite a few ways you can go about it. Working with a local real estate agent who specializes in foreclosures is a great start. Their expertise can be really valuable. And usually, their services are free for buyers. It's like having a guide, right? <laughs> what about online resources? Are those helpful? Absolutely. Online platforms like Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, they're great for browsing listings. But you got to be careful. Those listings can sometimes be outdated, especially in a fast-paced market. So double-checking with an agent is always smart. What other avenues are worth exploring? You can check directly with bank REO departments, especially smaller community banks. They might have some hidden gems that haven't been widely advertised. Also, don't overlook government agencies. HUD and USDA. The HUD Home Store website and the USDA's single-family housing website can be great resources. It's amazing how many resources there are out there if you're willing to look. Mm -hmm. And for a more streamlined approach, there are websites like foreclosure.com. They pull together listings from all sorts of sources. Exactly. So we know where to find these properties. Mm. But why would someone choose to buy a foreclosed home? What are the benefits? That's the million dollar question. I mean, there are a lot of unknowns. Why go through the hassle? Well, the biggest draw is the potential for savings. You could get a property below market value, which means instant equity. Banks often want to sell these properties fast, so they're willing to accept less than they would for a comparable home in the same area. So that instant equity, that's a big plus especially for first-time buyers or those looking for a solid investment. But even with the potential for bargains, 
financing is still important. What options are out there for buyers interested in foreclosures? Well, you've got several options. VA loans, FHA loans, USDA loans. Each loan type has its own requirements and benefits. So talking to a lender is key to find the best fit for your situation. For example, if you're thinking about a property that needs some work, a 203k repair loan, also called a rehab loan, could be a good option. It lets you combine the purchase price and the renovation costs into one mortgage. Those rehab loans sound like a game changer, especially for people who are comfortable with a bit of DIY. Speaking of thinking outside the box, we came across a really interesting approach, buying properties subject to the existing financing. Ah, uh, yes, that's a strategy Chris Haskins talked about. It basically involves taking over the existing mortgage payments, but without going through the whole traditional financing process, no credit checks, no qualifying through a bank. Sounds pretty appealing, right? It does. Like you're stepping right into the seller's shoes, taking over their mortgage. Chris mentioned you can potentially buy properties with much lower down payments which could be huge for those with limited funds. Yeah, but it's really important to be cautious with this strategy. It needs thorough due diligence and a solid understanding of the legal complexities involved. Subject to transactions can be great tools, but they're not for everyone. Before we move on to the potential risks of buying foreclosures, I have to mention BrianGargan.com one more time. That's Brian with an I. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is a treasure trove of information. Over 12,300 words, it could open doors to new income opportunities for you. Definitely a great reminder that there are always different paths to explore when it comes to financial stability. All right, now let's dive into the potential risks and challenges involved with buying these foreclosed homes. We know the benefits can be really tempting, but it's so important to be aware of the downsides. What should buyers watch out for? One of the biggest risks is what we call the as is where is condition. It's common with foreclosures, and it means you, the buyer, are responsible for any problems with the property, no matter how big or small. So you're really inheriting whatever's there. Yeah. Wayne Turner emphasized how important a thorough home inspection is, even if you can't negotiate on repairs. An inspection helps you understand those potential costs and avoid any nasty surprises down the road. Exactly. It's like getting a backstage pass to the property's history. And foreclosed homes, they often come with hidden or unexpected repairs. Because previous owners, they might have neglected maintenance when they were facing financial difficulties. Right. It can lead to a whole bunch of issues that need to be addressed. Wayne even suggested visiting home improvement stores and talking to contractors to get a realistic estimate of those potential repair costs. He had a great tip offering to pay contractors for their time when you're getting bids, shows respect for their expertise, and helps you build relationships in the process. It's a small investment that can pay off big time later on. Speaking of investments, title issues, and Lehman's, those are another challenge of foreclosures. They can be real deal breakers. Absolutely. Obtaining a title policy is crucial. It protects you against unexpected claims on the property, like, you know, back taxes or unpaid contractor bills. Think of it like insurance for your ownership rights. It gives you that peace of mind and protects you from financial burdens down the road. Now, let's not forget about something that's not as tangible but equally important. Emotional attachment. Ah, yes. Falling in love with the property and getting caught up in the excitement. Exactly. Wayne Turner warned against letting your emotions control your decisions. You don't want to end up overpaying, especially when competing against other bidders. It's crucial to set a firm price limit based on your budget and your analysis, and be willing to walk away if the bidding goes beyond that. So discipline and a clear head are key in these situations. And while we're talking about potential pitfalls, we can't forget about flood zones and insurance. Right. Researching flood zones is essential. It impacts your insurance costs, and it can affect the property's resale value later on. It's one of those hidden costs that can catch buyers off guard. But on a more positive note, let's revisit USDA loans. They offer some great benefits for those seeking more affordable housing, especially in rural areas. Wayne Turner is a big advocate for these loans, and for good reason. Imagine this, buying a home with no money down, maybe even having the bank cover those closing costs, and finding a property in good condition that doesn't need a ton of repairs. That's the potential of USDA loans. They're designed to help revitalize rural communities. So you're not just getting a good deal, you're also contributing to a larger effort. That's fantastic. But like any loan program, there are eligibility requirements, right? Yes, of course. You'll typically need a credit score of 620 or higher, a history of two years of stable employment, proof of paying your taxes, and your income has to fall within certain limits, which vary by location and household size. So 
USDA loans are geographically limited to those eligible rural areas, usually about 30 to 45 minutes outside major cities. But they offer a fantastic path to homeownership for those who qualify. Absolutely. All right, let's explore another strategy for those comfortable with a bit more risk. Buying properties subject to the existing financing. This strategy can be really appealing, especially if you don't have a ton of capital. You're basically taking over the existing mortgage payments without going through the usual lending channels, no credit checks, no bank qualifying. It sounds like a pretty unique approach. Mm. Chris even mentioned the potential for acquiring properties with much lower down payments, which could be a game changer for investors. Yeah, but remember, thorough due diligence is absolutely essential here. You need to understand those existing mortgage terms, any potential risks with the property, and the legal implications of a subject to transaction. Definitely not a strategy for everyone. But for those who do their homework, it can be a powerful tool for building wealth. Before we move on, I want to mention BrianGarvin.com one last time. That's Brian with an I. Don't miss his free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's packed with over 12,300 words of valuable information that could help you unlock new income streams and achieve financial freedom. The link is in his YouTube bio. It's a great reminder that there are many paths to financial freedom. And exploring new opportunities can be really beneficial. Absolutely. All right, now let's switch gears a bit and talk about a strategy that might appeal to those seeking high returns, tax lien and tax deed investing. Ah, uh, yes. This is where things get really interesting. We're talking about buying properties with delinquent property taxes, a strategy that offers some unique opportunities. Money moves with K broke these strategies down for us. Right, so with tax liens, you're essentially buying a certificate that earns interest until the property owner pays off those back taxes and redeems it. It's a way to potentially make passive income while you wait. What happens if the owner doesn't redeem the property? That's where tax deeds come in. With a tax deed, you can actually gain ownership of the property after a certain amount of time. It's like acquiring a property at a much lower price. The potential for high return sounds tempting. But it's super important to research and understand those specific laws and processes in each state, right? Absolutely. Each state has its own rules. We wouldn't want anyone caught off guard by unexpected legal hurdles or redemption periods. There are some resources that can help, though. Websites like govs.com, zeusauction.com, grandstreet.com, civicsource.com, and realauction.com can be really helpful for finding tax due and tax deed properties. And don't forget about county websites. They often list upcoming tax foreclosure options. So many ways to find potential deals. Now let's shift gears again and talk about government-owned homes. Chris O'Connell gave us some great insights on this. He talked about the Biden administration's plan to give owner-occupant buyers priority for government-owned properties. That sounds like a great opportunity for people seeking primary residences. It is. It's a 30-day window where only owner-occupants can submit offers. It levels the playing field a bit and makes homeownership more accessible for families. That's fantastic. So we've covered a lot of ground in this first part of our deep dive. From understanding the different stages of foreclosure to exploring strategies for finding and financing these properties, but we've only just scratched the surface. We've got more to uncover. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll dive even deeper into the potential risks and rewards of this unique real estate market. See you there. Welcome back to our deep dive into the world of foreclosed homes. All right, so in part one, we laid that groundwork. We talked about those different stages of foreclosure, where to find these properties, and some financing options. Now it's time to get into the nitty gritty, the potential risks and rewards. It's a bit like that, isn't it? Exploring a treasure map, there might be gold at the end, but there could be some booby traps along the way. Exactly. And speaking of potential traps, let's revisit that as is, where is condition we mentioned. It sounds like a gamble. It can be, yeah. Imagine walking into a home where the previous owners, they were struggling financially. They might have put off those repairs, you know, and you could be facing a long list of problems. Leaky roof, faulty wiring, who knows? Remember, with foreclosures, you're taking on those problems no matter how big. So it's really important to know what you're getting into. Wayne Turner, he couldn't stress enough how important a thorough home inspection is. Even if you can't negotiate on repairs, it helps you understand the potential costs. Absolutely. And avoid those unpleasant surprises. It's like getting a sneak peek behind the curtain, right? Now, we talked about those title issues and leashings. Those can be big roadblocks. Definitely. Getting a title policy is so important. It protects you against any claims that might pop up on the property. 
like back taxes or those unpaid contractor bills. It's like that safety net you need. Exactly. It gives you peace of mind knowing you're protected. But beyond the practical challenges, there's also that emotional side. Oh, absolutely. It's easy to get swept up in the excitement of finding a potential deal, especially when you start picturing how you could transform the place. It's like falling in love sometimes. But Wayne Turner warned about letting those emotions take over. You don't want to end up overpaying because you got carried away. It's so important to stick to your budget, your analysis, and know when to walk away if the bidding gets too high. It's about having that discipline. And speaking of things that can catch you off guard, flood zones and insurance. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Researching those flood zones is essential. It affects your insurance costs, and it can even impact the resale value later on. Definitely something to keep in mind. Now, on a brighter night, let's talk about those USDA loans again. They sound like a fantastic opportunity, especially for those looking to buy in rural areas. They really are a great program. No money down, the bank might even cover your closing costs. And you might find a property in good condition that doesn't need a ton of work. Plus, you're helping revitalize rural communities. It's a win-win. Of course, there are those eligibility requirements. Right. You usually need a good credit score, stable employment history, proofs of paying your taxes, and your income needs to be within certain limits. But for those who qualify, USDA loans can be a game changer. Absolutely. All right. Now let's talk about buying properties subject to the existing financing again. Ah, that strategy. It can be really appealing for those with limited funds. No credit checks, no bank qualifying. It sounds almost too good to be true. It can be a great option, but thorough due diligence is key. You have to understand the mortgage terms, any potential risks, and the legal stuff. Definitely not a strategy to jump into blindly. But for those who do their homework, it can be a powerful way to build wealth. Agreed. All right, now let's talk about a strategy for those seeking high returns. Tax lien and tax deed investing. Now we're getting into some advanced stuff. We're talking about buying properties with delinquent property taxes. The whole different ballgame. With tax liens, you're basically buying a certificate that earns interest until the property owner decides to pay those back taxes and redeem it. So you can potentially earn passive income while you wait. Exactly. But what if they don't redeem it? That's where the tax deed comes in. You could end up owning the property at a significantly reduced price. Sounds tempting, but there's a lot to learn. Definitely, you need to research the laws in your state very carefully. Each state has its own rules and regulations. We wouldn't want anyone to get caught off guard. Right. There are some helpful resources out there, though. Websites like govs.com, zeusauction.com, a bunch of them. And don't forget about those county websites. They often list upcoming tax foreclosure options. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about government-owned homes. Chris O'Connell had some interesting insights on this. He talked about the Biden administration's plan to prioritize owner-occupant buyers for those government-owned properties. That sounds like a great opportunity for people looking for a place to live. It is. They get a 30-day window to make offers before investors can jump in. That's a big advantage. It helps level the playing field and make home ownership more accessible. It's a step in the right direction. So we've covered a lot in this second part. We've talked about the risks, the rewards, and some alternative strategies, but there's still more to explore. There's always more to learn. Stay tuned for part three, where we'll wrap everything up and answer that big question, are buying foreclosed homes worth pursuing? We'll see you there. So we've really journeyed through the world of foreclosed homes, haven't we? We have, exploring everything from those initial stages and risks to financing and even some alternative strategies like those tax lands and tax deeds. We even talked about government programs aimed at making home ownership more accessible, like that 30-day window for owner-occupants on government-owned properties. And let's not forget about those USDA loans. They can be a great way to help revitalize those rural communities. Absolutely. So many paths to explore in real estate and foreclosures definitely offer a unique set of opportunities. But as we wrap up, that big question remains. Could buying a foreclosed home be a path to achieving financial freedom, especially in the market we're in today? It's the question everyone wants answered. Is it that golden ticket or a risky gamble? Right. It all comes down to your individual situation and goals. Are you a seasoned investor, a first-time home buyer? Your risk tolerance, your financial resources, your long-term vision, it all factors in. It's like navigating a maze, you know? Oh. So many paths, but only one leads to the center. Exactly. 
Foreclosures, they offer that potential for saving money, building wealth, but they also require careful planning, research, and a willingness to embrace those risks. It's not a walk in the park. If you're looking for a move-in ready home, something hassle-free, foreclosures might not be the best fit. But if you're okay with some uncertainty, willing to put in the work, it could be a really rewarding experience. Knowledge is power, and what we've covered is just the starting point. Keep learning, connect with those local experts, and most importantly, trust your instincts. If something feels too good to be true, it probably is. But if you approach foreclosures with caution, with knowledge, you might just unlock a whole world of possibilities. Red. Remember, real estate isn't just about transactions. It's about people, communities. Approaching these situations with empathy and understanding can make a difference. Well said. We hope this deep dive has given you the knowledge and confidence to navigate the world of foreclosed homes. Whether you choose this path or another, we wish you all the best in your real estate journey. Stay curious, stay informed, and never stop exploring those new opportunities. Happy investing, everyone!